And good morning, everyone. Ken Cartwright with you on this uh, Thursday morning. We have a Zoom meeting that we're going to broadcast live as well as record. And uh, this is Waste Matters. Good morning to um, Alan Pennington. Good morning, Ken. Nice to have you on the line. We've also got a guest with us. I'll let you introduce. Yes, this is Commissioner uh, Kevin Cameron. He's uh, one of our Board of Commissioners for Marion County and uh, is, is a resident up in Detroit. Good morning, Kevin. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear us? Okay, I got you. All right. Well, welcome, gentlemen. And a timely um, discussion this morning, Alan, as we talk about recycling in the canyon, we've got a big job ahead of us, and I'm going to let you set it up. Okay, yes. Well, um, you know, we've been, we've been spending a lot of time thinking about the, the, the um, waste system and recycling and, and those kind of uh, topics. But in the meantime, since then, we've had, of course, this huge disaster in, the, in, our, in our community. And uh, it just seemed that what we really needed to think about now is um, so many folks are, are um, looking at uh, a lot of issues as far as their property, uh, their business, their homes, any of their materials that they had that went up in the canyon that might have been damaged or destroyed, and how those how that material is going to be handled. And so it just seemed like the right thing to talk about as uh, both of you who have residences up there are the perfect people to uh, kind of go back and forth. And I know that the commissioner is probably be spending uh, probably 25 hours a day thinking about um, all of the uh, ins and outs of what needs to happen and laying this out. So I'm hoping that with his expertise, because he's way up on the, um, uh, the knowledge there of what's, uh, what's, how this is gonna unroll. So I was really uh, thankful that uh, Commissioner Cameron could join us today. Yeah, Alan, thank you. Thank you for your leadership in, uh, in Marion County. Um, you know, I, I uh, took that master recycling class with you um, years ago, probably six years ago now. And it's, it's, been, it's been great to, to see the, the excitement and um, the challenges that you've, you've uh, met as we go through um, a lot of a lot of changes in uh, our uh, in our environment and uh, environmental services. So, thanks for having me today. And I'll I'll just give you a quick update on, um, you know, we we knew this this fire destroyed most of the canyon back on uh, September seventh, September eighth, uh, Monday and Tuesday of of Labor Day. And, uh, you know, I was one of those that got evacuated. And I think, Ken, you probably did too. I was, I was driving through the fire in Mill City at about 1.30 in the morning on Tuesday. And it's a, it's a scene I'll never, ever get out of my, my mind and my head. And, and to go back up uh, in the canyon, uh, I've been into Detroit four times now and uh, Mill City and Gates uh, probably more often for meetings, et cetera. Um, but here's where we're at yesterday. Um, uh, in the last couple of days, it's starting to really play out. The, the one thing I want to stress with our listeners today is that I'm more concerned about um, uh, personal injuries, long-term health issues uh, from the aftermath of the fire than what we had during the fire. Unfortunately, you know, we lost five lives in Marion County. Um, and, uh, you know, some, a few injuries, but now when people are going back into the, these, these ruined homes, totally burned out, uh, sifting through their belongings, uh, more injuries, um, some unseen, uh, as they, you know, sift through hazardous waste and materials. So I want to just ask visitors to be patient. Um, and if you are doing that to make sure you have the right protective, uh, personal protective equipment, you know, gloves, nine, 95 masks, um, goggles, uh, you know, the things that you need to protect yourself uh, if you're, if you're uh, going through your personal belongings. Um, but as a whole, we finally uh, were able to pin down the state uh, and FEMA that, that, um, the state and FEMA have uh, 
come to an agreement that uh, the EPA is state is standing up eight to 10 teams. And I think it's important for all, all of us to remember, this isn't just the Sandy Ann Canyon disaster. Uh, you know, we think we've lost somewhere between, you know, seven, 800 homes uh, between Lynn and Marion County. Uh, think about between Medford and Ashland and down there, there's 25 homes in the Phoenix um, talent area that were just wiped off the map. So there's a lot of priorities in our state. Uh, we have asked the governor to prioritize the watersheds, which would be the McKenzie River. They had that. They had, a, you know, the Blue, Blue River down in there is a mess, too. And, and the Sandy Am, which is, you know, drinking water for 200 thousand plus people here in the Willamette Valley. So uh, I heard that message got through yesterday because I was in a, a meeting where FEMA talked about EPA would prioritize these watersheds. So that that's getting through. Um, they're standing up these uh, EPA teams, eight to 10 of them in the state uh, that will um, have a couple of different staging areas for hazardous waste. And that's the first phase. They call it part B as in boy. Um, these teams will go through starting hopefully within 10 to 14 days. Uh, they'll go through and they can do five to seven structures a day where they'll actually go in and inspect properties and remove the hazardous waste. Things like gasoline and batteries and uh, those types of things that are left behind, they will not be removing ash. Once those teams go through a community and remove that, and that's at no expense to the homeowners. So that's why I'm saying be patient. You, you, there's nothing to stop you from hiring the right contractors now that are legal certified contractors to do that for yourself. Um, but if you're doing it uh, on your own, there's no place that'll take that material. So if you're loading up a pickup truck of, of stuff off your property, there's no place to, to take it. And what we want to avoid is people doing that on their own and dumping it in places that we have to clean it up later and, and becomes environmental hazards to all of us. So once those EPA teams go through and clean up, then the part A, as they call it, is the ash and trash. Um, and that has not been decided as to how that will be contracted. However, it's probably days away from that being decided, whether that's the Army Corps of Engineers uh, that, that is very um, uh, useful to this. I mean, they, they're used to this. They've done it in different places. Um, and, uh, or if it's the state that does the contracting with, with uh, you know, counties being involved with that, um, but we're, we're kind of saying it, it's more expensive for Army Corps to come in and do it, but we, we're kind of saying, let's, let's, do the, let's do it the way that people have done it in the past, because what we want to do is make sure that all properties get cleaned up. There's a lot of people that didn't have insurance, and we want to make sure that that gets cleaned up, and we'll figure out how that's going to get paid for. Uh, FEMA, I think there's a reimbursement right now of 75%, and then 25% would be on the state and local authorities, which is a lot of money that none of us have. So it's part B, hazardous waste, come in and get that cleaned up. That's not gonna cost anybody anything that's being paid for. Uh, and then part A, the ash and trash uh, will be the next phase. Uh, again, I wanna say, if you're an individual homeowner and you're out there uh, you can hire contractors that are certified, and uh, probably, Alan, you know more about that, how they get certified by DEQ. Uh, when that stuff comes across, like, for example, down to Coffin Butte, there's going to be a certificate that says, yes, this has been cleaned. This is, this is uh, material that is certified to be able to be deposited in this particular area. Um, otherwise, if you show up at one of our transfer stations or, um, you know, Coffin Butte, and and that stuff from the fire they're going to turn you away because it's, it hasn't been certified as cleaned up so i think those are the important things the highlights right now that uh people need to know about and alan i'll i'll uh, stop for a minute and maybe you've got some questions or ken you've got some questions well i, I tell you what I, i'm going to let ken ask some questions because i saw him writing them down but i just want to interject right real uh very quickly here is 
is I would encourage those folks who are going to start, you know, that, that are anxious to start in on all that, uh, please take, go to the Marion County Public Works Emergency Management webpage. There is a ton of super information there that will be, you'll, you'll find very um, helpful to help you figure out how to go about all this. Um, and I would strongly encourage you to read all of that carefully. Good tip. And gentlemen, um, one of the things that's been surfacing recently here as you know, um, I am a resident of Gates, and yes, we lost our place. And I know that there's a lot of older homes up there that have um, um, asbestos siding, asbestos uh, within the building structures. And there's a great concern about as we approach cleanup, is that a different certification program through um, EPA or DEQ for cleanup? Well. Um, Ken, I, I'm just going to say this. So the EPA will go through, let's use your house for an example, or somebody's house that's a neighbor that, that sure. potentially has asbestos in it. Uh, the EPA will go through that. And once they do the hazardous waste cleanup, and I don't know what that looks like. And Alan, I don't know if you do, but they're going to go through and then they'll certify that the rest of this waste is ash and trash. So uh, that, that, that is what I understand. And then the ash and trash will be certified to be able to go to wherever it's designated that that's going to go to. Um, the, the, the one thing, and I saw some guy when I was up in Detroit, I don't know, a, a week ago, Friday, like you, you know, I, I'm a resident, um, my home standing, smoke damage, et cetera. But I saw a guy whose home was standing and he's up on his roof with a blower blowing all the ash and everything off of his uh, roof. Um, I know that, I think it was in uh, Malibu where they had that big fire. They outlawed um, blowers for two years. You couldn't use a blower on your property, you know, to get people to stop blowing the stuff around. So those are the kinds of things we need to be worried about. But if you wait for the EPA certification going through, then I think you're going to be fine. Uh, and Alan, maybe you want to add to that. Yeah, there is, a, um, Ken, getting to your uh, specifically about asbestos, the, the, the uh, Oregon Department of Environmental Quality has a list on their website of licensed asbestos abatement contractors. And so those, those are folks who have, um, are, are, are um, endowed with that ability to, uh, to go in and uh, make those assessments and provide those services. But again, it's going to be, you know, at a, at a at a cost. And so there's a, they're, they're all over the, the area here. So again, you can, you can find these links again, if you go to that in, uh, public works environmental service, uh, excuse me, environmental management website to get there. But this is a, a Oregon Department of Environmental Quality webpage. Yesterday, yeah. yesterday, my wife and I went and sat down, and filled out the uh, forms and discussed our needs with FEMA. And uh, I, I really want to urge everyone who's had a loss in the canyon to do that. And they're meeting at Maryland School in Lyons uh, today through the third, which is Saturday. And uh, you, you're gonna get a lot of great answers. And uh, if you have questions about how you proceed to recover, that's my advice. But one of the things that we're hearing, and I asked them yesterday about that was, that if we don't go through the proper procedure of cleanup and recycling, for our homes that when you apply to, and you will need to reapply to use your septic system, uh, water and uh, power, it's very possible that you will not get permits for that. Is a, can either of you add any clarification to that? Uh, that that's true. Um, and I think Alan referred to the public works website. There's actually a packet that our, uh, if you contact our building department, now they're going to send you or they're going to give you this packet. There's a link that I have in, in a Dropbox link. I saw it yesterday that goes through those steps and uh, your property is going to have to be certified as cleaned up properly before you're going to be allowed to, to uh, build on it. And there's, there's a lot of things that we're going to try decisions that uh, our, our planning department and planning building permits 
department is bringing us a list of of obstacles that they think maybe people will have is to, to try to rebuild and we're going to see that list i believe it's monday or tuesday at management update uh and uh, as commissioner brentano would say we're going to be as liberal as possible uh, to try to allow people to rebuild their existing structures. But environmentally, we have to be, we, we have to take care of the environment. We can't ignore that part. But when it comes to rebuilding, um, you know, in existing footprints and septic, we're going to try to allow that to happen. Are there any limitations right now, uh, Commissioner, on people um, returning to their property, even with an RV or, or a, um, a trailer or something to live on it so that they have uh, access to their property before it's clean? Uh, Ken, Ken, you cut out a little bit. Is there any limitations? And that's what I heard. Sure. As people want to return to their property now to protect what's there and uh, be there for the beginning of cleanup that they can do, are there any limitations with uh, trailers, uh, small um, travel trailers and RVs to be on these properties? No. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they need to have the right uh, facilities or be self-contained. Uh, right. And I know uh, Lynn County, uh, I talked with uh, Roger Nyquist yesterday. I think they've already taken a board order to uh, allow people to move their RVs on as long as they had power, uh, the right power hookup. Uh, they weren't requiring them to have water because you can have water uh and they weren't requiring them to have sewer as long as you pumped it. Uh, and then um, they were going to extend that for another 90 days after the first of the year. We haven't taken that action yet, but I know that we're not gonna go out there and, and slap people for being on their property as long as they're being safe, you know, uh, and doing the right things. They're not dumping sewage on the ground, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, and that was my understanding too, but I wanted to get a clarification publicly from you, sir. And, and uh, one of the other issues, there was a lot of wind damage uh, with trees during that firestorm. And I'm hearing that tree cutters, fallers, are being told to stay away uh, because the area still is not clear, and yet property owners are wanting to uh, get rid of the dangerous trees and snags. Uh, do you have any insight on that? I, I don't. I know that uh, most uh, loggers are really busy. Uh, obviously, Highway 22 was a priority in getting, uh, last I heard, there was uh, 25,000 trees that had come down and they still are working, you know, up in the, between uh, Gates and Detroit and then all past uh, uh, between Detroit, Idana, and then there's a lot more trees up past Idana to the pass. So, and then uh, our public works department put out a special bid uh, for the little North Fork. The little North Fork is even, oh my gosh, it's so bad up there. Uh, so they've got tree crews working up there to, to make sure the roads are safe so that we don't have somebody having a tree fall on them when they're trying to get back to their house. So I know my, one of my properties in Detroit, Ken, has a, has a, a red tag around it a tree that says hazard tree because it got burnt in in the bottom i'm wondering myself how when who who's going to pay you know is it my responsibility uh to get this hazard tree down i don't know the answer to that question um and maybe that'll come here in the next week or so as as we start to figure that out it's a question that's being asked good now, and i'm glad i asked it because in in our listing area we have quite a few fellas that uh, do tree work. And uh, I promised that I would bring it up at the meeting. So um, the other issue, I guess, about the tree falling was that it also stirs up the ash. And uh, right now, just like a leaf blower, that's not a good thing. Right. Okay. Uh, Alan, um, we've got to, I couldn't, I couldn't believe how much metal is in a person's house until I saw just the metal in my debris field. And uh, it, as a former metallurgist, I can tell you that once it gets reheated like that, it, it changes the properties of the metal. Is that going to be a special consideration when we recycle and we are able to get bins for metal? Um, you know, Ken, I, 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 I won't speak to that 
with 100% certainty. But you know, when you think of the, the temperatures that cause those metals to deform like that, where you know, it takes, I think uh, aluminum starts to melt at about uh, 1300 degrees. Um, so it's, it was obviously a really hot fire, but when you, when you have scrap metal, um, when, when you think about that, it's, it's pretty much a, a, a toxic st a stew of all sorts of metals, right? Uh, yes. You're getting all different types, uh, whether it's aluminum or lead or copper or whatever. And so I honestly, I don't think it's going to be a big issue as far as recycling metal, as long as it's, you know, as long as it's safely transported to the, the smelters. <clears throat> Again, it's always, you know, it's everything up there is going to be coated in ash. And it's basically going to have to be treated with literally with kids gloves uh, and a Tyvek suit. So it's, um, again, one of those things that I would encourage folks not to handle. And I've seen so many pictures of folks up there going through their houses, uh, wearing virtually no protection except for maybe boots. And, and also, um, just also want to throw that out there is if folks are going to go back up there, leave your kids at home. Um, no. Exposing children to that kind of stuff, especially if they're not wearing an N95 mask, breathing in that ash, because you may not be able to see it, but the slightest bit of breeze up there, it's in the air and uh, you're going to be breathing it in. So please take those precautions. Pacific Sent, yeah, I'm sorry. Pacific well, I want to, again, make, encourage folks to wait. Uh, sure. Be patient. I know it's hard, but, um, you know, help is coming. And uh, everything that uh, Commissioner Cameron was mentioning uh, is, is going to be very beneficial to the folks up there. My last point is that uh, I, we've called Pacific Sanitation on our behalf, as well as others who have asked me about it, and recycle bins or metal containers for just the metal alone are non-existent. Um, is there any help coming for that? I have heard that they are um, trying to secure more containers. Uh, I mean, obviously they, they have a store of them, but they are, it's, uh, they're going to be in huge demand. So they're trying to secure more materials to get up there because there's going to be a, uh, a huge demand for uh, large drop boxes in that area. In the right. Area. And they, and they urge me to let listeners know that you need to call Pacific Sanitation and get your name on a list and it's first come first serve. Thank you. And, that, and, and that'll actually kind of wrap it up for my questions up here. Uh, Commissioner Cameron, I really appreciate your insight and taking your busy time to talk with us this morning. And Alan, I'm going to let you close. Okay, well, uh, again, thank you all for uh, participating in this today. And again, um, advise all the, the listeners out there to check out that website. I've already said it a couple of times, but it's Marion County Public Works Emergency Management. Uh, has a ton of information that will help you anywhere from uh, dealing with uh, the ash and dust to, uh, you know, what to look for when you're going to try to apply to FEMA for, uh, for help. So please take a look at that website. And, uh, and also, uh, uh, Commissioner Cameron, you want to mention one more time about that meeting today that's going to be going on up in the, up in the canyon? Which meeting is that? Uh, the one where people were going to be able to gather and talk uh, about um, issues up there. You were mentioning that before? Uh, no, I, I, there's not one today, Alan, that I know. Oh, about. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we had one last week on Friday. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry. But, but, uh, our office can answer questions if people have specific questions, but I think a lot of them are going to, to, uh, public works. Okay. All right. Well, this is a, definitely a work in progress and we don't have all the answers yet. You've uh, answered a lot of great questions this morning. And I'm also asking listeners to be patient when that information is available. And if it gets into my hands, you're going to hear about it. So be patient. Don't get in a hurry. We're in a hurry too, but we're going to wait it out. So just take okay. your time. Hey, Ken. Yes, sir. One last thing. The right of entry forms are the really critical ones. We forgot to talk about that. Uh huh. And those are going to be posted on our website, social media. Uh, I'll put it on my Facebook, but we've got to get everybody to fill those right of entry forms so EPA can get on their property and do that hazardous remove. They've got to be filled out and sent back in. So watch for those in the next 24 hours. Great. That's, that's a key. It's got to be done in the next two weeks. Great point. 
Thank you, gentlemen, both for this issue of Waste Matters on KYAC. Uh, thanks again, and we'll all be in touch with each other soon. Thank you, Ken. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. And you've been listening to Waste Matters, a public affairs program of KYAC. KYAC 94.9.